Welcome to Celebrating Act Two. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life. Well, hello and welcome back. We're here with my partner, John Coleman, and uh, one of our favorite guest contributors, Dr. Liz Lister. Dr. Liz, welcome. To, good to see you again. Thank I you. Wanna, I want to begin with this, a little, a little performance. Summertime, summertime, some, some, summertime, 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 some, some. Remember that? Okay, you're not old enough. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it is summertime. It's not officially summertime as we re actually recording this, but you know we're in Southern California. It's been summertime for two months now, um, and we've had some hot days. And and summertime, to in my mind, is the time when you let everything go. You just you know it all. You lay back. You lay on the beach. You do whatever. Summertime is like, of course, it's related to vacation time in my mind. But it really shouldn't be just let everything go in terms of your health, should it? Right. So Never. what do we do to stay healthy during that time when the last thing we're thinking about is being healthy? Well, we might not be thinking specifically about being healthy, but we always want to look good, right? That's always people talk about getting ready for summer and... Oh, yeah. uh, uh, yeah, exactly. Well, there's a few things that I think people can do. We have this as five tips for our audience today. The first is that most people have the opportunity to slow down a little bit during the summer. All right. Don't have to be a school teacher where you actually have the summer off, but some, some variation on the theme of slowing down a little bit. Sure. And I like to connect that with getting a little bit more rest. Focus on your sleep, on your sleep quality protect your sleep, make sure that you're getting rest. So that's my first tip. Okay, so like when I um, try to go take a nap every, every day uh, or three days a week and I'm successful one day a week, I'm beginning to follow tip one. <laughs> yes, that's absolutely right. I mean, there are entire cultures that are based on napping, including my South American background. So I, I'm a big fan of naps. But generally, it's very important to... Make sure we protect our sleep in general and sleep hygiene, which we can talk a whole bunch more about another time. Okay. Okay. Sleep hygiene. I'm writing that down. What's next? All right. What's next is vitamin D. Vitamin D is known, uh, some people call it the sunshine vitamin. We do get the active form of vitamin D by sunlight causing a conversion of the inactive form of D into the active form, that if that happens in our skin. However, I also think it's good for people to supplement, right? And the reason that it's good to supplement is because even though our skin converts vitamin D to the active form and we can get D by being outdoors, sunscreen blocks that process of the vitamin converting to the active form. Also, showering and using soap interferes with that process really right? so showering exact, and soap. Mm -hmm. so so john so you've you, been you've been really working hard at uh, your, your your lack of showering and soap may be uh, one of the reasons you're you're so healthy yeah well that's done it. that's it no art it's because i take a lot of vitamin d and you've just started taking vitamin d what did so i ever for you and and particularly because dr liz has said that this is one of the few vitamins, and she's going to have a whole section on whether or not it's really a vitamin uh, so another, another time, is that there's a wide body of evidence that people don't overdose on vitamin D. Right. Like vitamin Correct. C. Correct. Yep. All right. So moving on, yeah. number three. Okay. Number three, hydration. Staying really well hydrated. A lot of people have become so health conscious that they avoid putting salt on anything, and especially in summer when it's hotter and we're losing fluids through our breathing and through sweating, we want to make sure not only are you drinking plenty of water, but make sure you get your electrolytes. Go ahead and put salt, make sure you're getting enough salt uh, in your diet. <clears throat> I am not a fan of Gatorade, those types of drinks. You know, the Gatorade was developed for the Florida Gator football team. 
yeah. that were practicing in Florida heat outside for five right. hours a day and they weigh two to 300 pounds each. So if that's not you, then I'm not a fan of those types of drinks. They're too sugary. However, just kind of basic principles of making sure you're getting enough salts and keeping enough hydration, including approximately half of your body weight in pounds, half of that in ounces of water per day. It's a ballpark. It's not a hundred percent accurate for every person. So However, I take so I'd take half oh. of my body weight. That's a thousand tons. Uh, <laughs> divide it in half, right? And and turn it into ounces, and that's how many I ounces of. Exactly. I would be floating. John, John, do what I do. Just go out and plug the garden hose into your mouth and count to 300. And <laughs> you'll be fine. That'll do it. Okay. okay. But no, good advice about the uh, about hydration, which I think is something everybody takes for granted in the summer that, you know, you have some water nearby. But I didn't know about um, the salt because, of course, during the rest of the year, we're inundated with people telling us, don't take too much salt. There's salt in food right. already in right. preparation. And it's not good for right. your blood pressure and blah, blah, blah. So right. not that I need to add a lot of salt during the summer, but I do need to make sure I get enough so that I my hydration stays up. Exactly. Yeah. You got it. Okay, we got something else. Okay. Number four, keep moving. Now, sometimes I call exercise the E word. Because sometimes people just don't want to, some people love to exercise, but other people don't. And so what I like to refer to is just move your body. Just do a little bit more. You can level your level up just a little bit, whatever degree of movement that you can. All right. And we also want to have that be not necessarily your exercise or your workouts per se, but your baseline activity level, okay? So if you think of you got your baseline activity level and then it spikes up when you go to the gym, that's like a big workout and you have your activity level and then it spikes up for another workout, you can raise that baseline in between the workouts. So that's walking the dog, just going out for a walk, parking further away, okay? Taking the stairs instead of the elevator. Those are all what we call NEAT or non-exercise activity thermogenesis. So you're burning calories by keeping your body moving. Uh, of course, that's important all year long. But in the summertime, you know, I, I always used to think of the summertime as when I would be naturally more active, right? Of course, I grew up right. on the East Coast, so the winter was, <laughs> you know, snow and clouds, and the right. summer was you go outdoors. But mm -hmm. I find that as I get older, summertime is really more of a time of inactivity for me. I stay out of the hot sun in the middle of the day. Um, I make sure I'm sitting on the porch and enjoying the day instead of uh, working right. in the garden at the hottest time. I find that right. I'm not necessarily more active during the summer. I'm actually sometimes less active. Uh, it's good that you notice that. That's really great. Yeah. So that and way so, you can, you know, walks later when, and like after, after dinner walking, is a fantastic way to get the body digesting dinner and get you ready for a really nice night of sleep and uh, help your metabolism work at its best. So <clears throat> that's a side benefit of walking later when it's cooler. So, so far you've given us four fabulous tips. If we didn't get another one, that should probably be really good for us for the summer. But do you have this, like a, a fifth magic one that you want to share oh. with us? Okay, I don't know how magical it is, but it's a really good one, which is to <clears throat> catch up on your service and maintenance, as I call it. Catch up on health maintenance visits. A lot of people, you know, we're very busy during the year. And sometimes this, if summer slows down a little bit for you, take the time, make the phone calls, make the appointments, and go get the regular checkups that maybe you put off when you were busier during the year. Do the, what I call service and maintenance on this one precious body that we've been given each, we're issued one per lifetime. 
Yeah, good good advice. Real good advice because we have to uh, we have to rely on the professionals, quite frankly, for a lot of guidance. I think, particularly as you get older, right? Uh, when we're celebrating our act too, and living longer, healthier lives because we're paying more attention to the things that can help prolong it. Yes, and with the help of Dr. Liz Lister, thank you, Dr. Liz MD. We really appreciate it. My pleasure. Look forward to seeing you again soon. Likely, thank you. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.